cold line. Are you sure about that? It's Thursday. Welcome to the No PC Show. Um, tried to get the show together in the best I could. I was running a little late. So forgive any issues. Uh, tonight's show is called Kings Without Crowns. Are we typecast as black people in America? A uh, lot's been going on in, in the news and and something I brought up uh, a couple of episodes ago. I was speaking about who we are as black people in America and how we wouldn't be who we are if it wasn't for what happened to us during slavery. So a, a lot of us don't have a an idea of what it is to be African. I said, you'll discover how much you don't know about yourself when you get yourself some African friends and when you see how they hold on to the culture, how they raise their kids in the culture of being an original black man or an original black woman. How they pray. What they eat. A lot of times. A lot of people don't get it. That's because we're living under. The white print. Not the blueprint. But the white print. What was impressed upon us. From the time. They kidnapped us. And brought us across that ocean and put us in these colonies of America, South America, the Caribbean islands. And a lot of white folks don't want to hear or deal with this and this. And this is one of the problems why we can't get anything done. Because the truth and honesty of it is, they can't relate. And even though it's that try to relate, really can't relate. The only way you're going to be able to relate is if I come to your house unexpectedly, kicking your door, kidnap the whole family, rape your daughter, rape your wife, take them somewhere you never see them again, beat your ass every day. Now you will be able to relate. And, and let, let me keep you hostage for, I don't know, 50 years. Say 50 years, that's, maybe that's just one generation. The, 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 the way I look at when I talk about the, the reparations, 300 years of slavery means you have destroyed maybe 15 generations of black people in this country. Now that's 300 years of slavery. Now, now add on another 100 years of Jim Crow policy keeping us from, from, from growing, from being who we could be. There's a special, uh, you can probably see it on YouTube, I think it was a PBS special or a History Channel special Slavery by Another Name, uh, good good show. I'm, I'm always going to recommend people watch different things. I I, I spend a lot of time re-educating myself on who I am, speaking to my African friends and things like that, trying to get a, a real understanding. I don't call myself African American. Stopped a while back. I'm just going to be black. You can call yourself whatever you want. Knock yourself out. Part of the white print is this is what we've given you. And the only way you're going to be successful is if you follow our white print for success. And even if you follow it, we have to choose you for success because that's the way our system works. You can't come in our system and decide to be who you want to be and not who we've decided that you are. 
I want everybody to get this understanding. Racism is a white problem. It's not our problem. It's our situation. It's what we're constantly dealing with in this country. I posted some on Facebook this morning. Black history is American history, but it's the other side that nobody wants to talk about. So they, they can keep the Black History Month. That clip that I started to show off with is Michael Williams. He played Omar on The Wire, and he's been in quite a few different different things since then. And it was interesting because he's having a conversation with himself and an internal struggle, cognitive dissonance, where he's believing one thing but in his heart, he knows there's something else going on. It's kind of what we deal with in in America on a constant basis. You want to believe that I'm successful because I'm doing the right things. Or am I successful because I'm following the white print? And if I get out of line on the white print, then what does that mean? It basically means we're still mentally slaves in this country. We can't come together the way we need to come together like other groups come together. What Today was a national uh, day without Hispanics. So all across the country, they have collectively came together for a purpose. They do it a lot. They do it with their they politics too. They get behind one candidate and that's who they support. What's wrong with us? We we can't do do some of these same things. Th this is our problem. We're not talking about individual success stories because individual success doesn't get you anywhere but your own island. We're talking about our inability to come together as one people and, and do something and make a difference for all of our people. Time out for all that fighting other causes. The gays, the Hispanics, everybody else is, is, is fighting for, for what they want. Black people need to stop feeling bad about, okay, I just don't want to make this a black thing. That was the problem with o Obama. He didn't want to do anything for us without including everybody else. But we're, we're unique to this continent. We're unique in the way that we are the only ones that were brought here and enslaved. We're, we're not immigrants. So, 300 years of kidnapping, 300 years of rape, abuse, destruction, no pay. And believe me, white people are fully aware of it. They fully aware of it. Don't let no white person ever tell you, I didn't know, I didn't understand. Yeah, you raised in that bullshit situation, especially white men. And you you in control, so why why would you give up control? Why do I have to pay attention to anything you're saying, Negro? I don't have to share my power with you. Uh, you're successful only if I let you be successful. How dare you have any thoughts other than the thoughts I give you? Let me share a clip, it, and it was a real emotional clip because it's, it's this brother, and he's talking to these white men, and he's trying to get a point across. And then it just hits them, and then it just all spills out. Check this out. There's a certain um, um, sort of um, silent consciousness about what it means to be American that I sense coming from uh, white folks that, that I'd like to talk about. Before I do that, I'd like to say one more thing that's hard about talking about racism, and that is that uh, you know people of color are spilling their guts and uh, doing education f 
uh, two white people. Let me explain to you how you've got this wrong. Let me explain to you how you've got that wrong. Let me explain. And then we get cross-examined, and it's like, well, maybe your problem is blah, 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 blah. And it's always, you know, racism gets looked at as a person of color's problem, and it's not. You know, we're like on the receiving end of the problem, but we're not the problem. You know, I, I, I walk in a world where, uh, or, where black people, where Latinos, where Asians, where Arabs, all these different people are, 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 are experienced as problem people. And that, well, we're going to deal with the, 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 the person of color problem when, in fact, uh, racism is essentially a white problem. And that for you to understand what racism is about, you're going to be so uncomfortable. You're going to be so different from who you see yourself to be now that, uh, it, you know, there's just no way for you to get it from where you're sitting. And I'm not saying that you could never get it. I mean that, uh, that you need to uh, step outside of your skin and step outside of what uh, seems really comfortable and familiar to you and launch out into some real, for you, unknown territory. And you haven't gone out there like you haven't, uh, you know, gotten in proximity to uh, black people, as you say, because you don't have to. And that's part of what it means to be American to me, is to, uh, to have all these things that you can do if you want to, that you don't have to do if you don't want, uh, if you don't want to do. And there's a way in which American and white and human become synonyms. That why can't we just treat each other as uh, human beings? To me, when I hear it from a white person, it means why can't we all just pretend to be white people? I'll pretend you're a white person, and then you can pretend to be white. Why don't you eat what I eat? Why don't you drink what I drink? Why don't you think like sing I think? Songs. Why don't you feel like I feel? God damn it, I'm so sick and goddamn tired of hearing about that. I'm sick of that. That's what it means to be human being to me. That's what it means to be white. That's what it means to be American. Why don't you come the hell over here? That's what I hear every goddamn day. And you know that I can't come over there. You know that this skin and that this hair and that this way that I talk and that I think and I feel will never, ever, Get included because I'm unpalatable to this goddamn nation. I'm unpalatable. You cannot swallow me. You cannot taste me. You cannot feel me because you don't want to. You think that you can survive without me, but you can't, man. You think, and you think that, hey, it'll all be fine when we just treat each other like human beings. And what that says to me is don't be yourself. Be like me. Keep me comfortable. Connect where I'm ready to connect. Come out to my place. Or maybe I'll come down and get some artifacts from your place. Uh-uh. That is bullshit. It is. He, he broke it down and explained that when, if you talk to a lot of white folks, like I'm in corporate America, so, and, and been in corporate America for over 20 uh, five years and when you try to talk to these people the, the same body gesture that that white man had is what you get anything you say is minimized they don't see it that way and if, even if they do see it they're going to bullshit you on it well, if you just do this, well, if you just do this, well, if you just... See, if you make me feel comfortable. See, you're not making me feel comfortable. That's why any white person can walk through this door and we will embrace them. They understand the culture. Uh, white people, one to three years, boom, they shoot right up the corporate ladder. Black people, seven to ten years, maybe. If you've made enough white folks feel comfortable... And that's the problem. We can't get anywhere making them feel comfortable to continue to bullshit us. I don't care how many degrees you get. You still the prey. We got stories all, all in the news right now of, of nonsense that's been going on with Charles Oakley was a beloved Nick, Nick's fan. But now he's catching all types of hell 
they trying to besmirch his image because he called out a good white man, the good, good owner. And I'm sure everybody saw the, the ruckus at the, at the game. Why are you a former star of this team and you got to pay to get into the game? What type of disrespectful bullshit is that? That's the type of shit they do. And it don't stop with him. Nick Cannon. I don't know if any, how many people saw the white comedy special he did. I'm sure he got paid for it. But he's on the contract with NBC. America's Got Talent. And there were some whispers going around talking about they were thinking about dropping it, uh, firing him because in his contract you can't use the, the N-word. But that just means we're looking for a reason to get rid of you anyway. So Nick wound up quitting. But hey, we, we made you niggas successful. Now y'all get a little money. Now y'all done got a little bit out of hand. We gonna put you back in your place, and 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 none of us can forget Arsenio Hall had the best night show that black people could appreciate, and the moment he put Louis Farrakhan on that show, curtains, it's done. They brought him back recently, like a year ago. Great ratings, everything. Had Jay Leno come out and say, you're getting a second season. Boom. Posted again. You're out of here, Arsenio. You're only allowed to be successful when white folks say you can be successful. And I know it's, it's going to skip a whole lot of people because all these successful black people you're staying in your lane. Don't say you're not. I, I, I see meetings all the time. And there could be 65 people in the room and two black executives out of 65. We're not represented. But these blacks are, are pretty much staying in their lane. Oprah stayed in her lane so you can, she can get her own thing. It's the formula to stay in your lane so you can get your own thing. Hey, I, I admire you going to Africa and, and, and helping some folks over there. We got a lot of folks here that need help. Then we got to recreate, after we get ourselves here in order, then we got to reconnect with our brothers and sisters in Africa and, and, and connect that again. That's how d detached we are in here. People, I, it, I don't know if I can un un explain any further how this system is, is, is made and, and, and let us not forget the, the internal problems. The, the 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 killings, the senseless killings. We've lost, what, three kids in the last week to gunfire, a 12-year-old, 11-year-old, and a 2-year-old. Thank God somebody talked in one of the cases. We got to be talking in all the cases. The only way to get rid of all that is for people to start talking. The only thing the government can do for us is give us some resource centers or something that the, all the stuff that they took away. We got go governor around here in, in the state and we ain't had a budget in, in two years because he's trying to destroy the unions and, 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 and do all this other stuff. And I told people even before he got elected, don't vote for this guy. This guy's going to come in and, and cut all the programs and people were telling me, well, black people are abusing the programs. Shame on all you all. By the time the program gets to black people, it's been so abused that you're just the fall guy. By the time you get it, you're the fall guy. We're only 13% of the population in America. How are we abusing the welfare system when there's more whites on welfare than blacks on welfare? But you'll be pointed as the one that's abusing the programs. Every program that comes down, they get it first. You wanna know why? Because their information highway is built and it goes through quicker. 
They got resource centers. They got better schools. The information is pushed through the schools. It's pushed through the, uh, the community centers. You'd be shocked. Where I live, I, I go to the community center. Boom. It's all types of information on the wall about every program available. There ain't no resource centers in the hood. Community centers. I mean, we got a church, but over 50% of the people that live in the neighborhoods don't go to church. So by the time you get this information two, three years down the line, oh, it's already been in, in full effect. Then you got the foreign aspect coming in and getting benefits that were supposed to be for us. But we don't qualify. We don't, we don't even know how to apply for these different types of things. And people can say I'm lying if I want to. I got, I got friends from other countries. They've told me. I got a voucher for housing. I got money for schooling. Free. Because I come from a war-torn country. They come from a war-torn country across the seas. You're living almost in war zones in America. And we don't get it. We still entertaining. We still bouncing balls. We still dancing around and showing our ass. And that's the way the world likes us. Poverty is an economic situation with social ramifications. This is a capitalist society. If you ain't got money, you done. And the system is designed that we're not trying to give you nothing over here on the white side because we don't like how you operating. So all you young black men with your pants hanging down, with your, with your hairdos, we don't like that. We don't want it around us and we don't want it around our kids. We'd rather see your black ass in jail, whether you're guilty or not. What's that scene from Minister Society? Minister Society, the hunt is on, and you the prey. Prison population grows. How, how is black men over half the prison population, and we're only thirteen percent of uh, of the people in in the country? And if you want to cut that number down even further, if if we're only thirteen percent. 13, 17%, however you want to cut it. And half of that is women and kids. You're talking about 8% are men. So you got 8% of the men, and you're saying the prison population is over 50 to 60% of black men from that 8%. What army are you talking about that's going to fight this revolution? We got half your army locked up. Most of your army locked up. And then we got the other ones distracted with wealth. Distracted with how we living and how they want to live. So they not concerned with you. And then we got your beautiful women. We raped and abused them. And then we convinced them that they didn't need you. And now they thriving in this system. They got more degrees than we got. And they still going to come up here and say, yes, sir, because they, they like the independence. They like what we give them. We have given them life. You weren't giving them nothing but death and destruction and, and nothing that they could really look at and, and really grab on to. This is the way the system works. It's designed to keep us in our place to keep us divided to keep us in the dark all you black Trump supporters you, you're just as bad as the, the slaves that, that stood by the ship with Massa he got a plan for black America go out and look up his 10 point plan then you come back and tell me what you read and what you think is going to happen. This man still thinks Fred, Frederick Douglass is alive. He has no plan for black America. I want to come in here and lock everybody up. 
then this helps my prison complex. We the only ones that can fix that problem. We got to come together, meet, and, and, and do what we have to do to fix the issues. That's why I keep saying the, the reparations has to be pushed. It should have been pushed years ago, but if they swing you from trees, ain't too much you can do about it, right? If they killing leaders, ain't too much you can do about it. But from the 70s to now, nobody has pushed legislation for reparations to make black communities whole. Like I said, with, with, with the Village Project, we got to rebuild the villages. And people think it's, it's crazy and cruel that you, you want us to actually go back and, and, and think about how to change everything. You want us to not shop at these stores in our communities that take our money back to their communities. How is she going to take the community back if you're not willing to stand for something for long periods of time? If you don't shop at a, a store for three months, that store is done. That store has to leave. But we have to get training to put stores back in our neighborhoods. We got to, to, to rebuild we got to start loving each other. We got to get rid of those elements that would destroy the community. Hey, your brother, your sister, your mama, your daddy. We we want to talk to them and say, hey, come on, man, let's work. Let's 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 get this thing right. And for those that don't want to get it right, hey, sorry, go on over there. Maybe we can find a program to to help you get clean and put you out into the world in a better spot because people got to understand there's conditions built into American society for white people. And that's why I look at white people that aren't making it. Shit, it's, it's designed for you to make it. All you got to do is show up and, 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 and nod your head Yes, Grandmaster. Yes, High Hitler. That's all you got to do, and you in. Like I say, when you're a black person, that shit, I can't even remember the last time I had an interview with a black person. I've had one interview with a black person in all my life. But two. It's always a white man making, making the decision on who gets hired. And when you call them on it, you, you might as well get up and lead the interview. I can remember a case where the, the white man told me, well, you know, the, the guy, he really thought he deserved uh, more than we were willing to give. And my question was, did he do the work? Well, it's not a matter of did he do the work. Yes, it is a matter if he did the work. You didn't have to tell me this dude was black because I know. This is how they treat us. This is how they act. You could be the most greatest person in the whole department. Unless you got a child on the wall saying, this person did this, this, and this, and this, you're going to get screwed. Maybe one year, maybe two years. You know, as long as you're a good nigga, you, you'll be okay for a minute. We, we like you. You come out and drink with us. And generation after generation, we've we've gone along with this and found ourselves on the short end of the stick because they've convinced us that individual success in our world helps all of us, but it doesn't in their world. It, it helps to further what they're doing. They're that community. Donald Trump made it plain during the election. We're going to help America... And we're going to help the blacks. Tell me he didn't say it. Tell me this man did not run a divisive campaign. And you got all these Negroes still running 
supporting this man. Don't tell me no crap about, well, sometimes he doesn't speak right or anything. This man is fully aware of his bullshit. His father was a bullshitter and taught him how to be a bullshitter and taught him how to work this system that they call America. And one of the first rules in the system is like, fuck everybody except me. It's about my money. And just like that white man was looking at that black man as he was going off, I can't even relate. Donald Trump does not relate to black people. But we got blacks convinced that what he's doing with the government is going to be beneficial to blacks. Get the fuck out of here. The only thing that's going to be beneficial to blacks is that we get some reparations in this country and get to dividing where we can get our own shit together. And we, and we 300, 400 years behind. I look out the window every day and I see building after building going up. And, and guarantee ain't none of them got our name on them. That's how far we behind in this world. So if they got a 400 year hair start, we may never catch up. But that's the design. Do we KD? Do we just say, hey, I'm going to go with this team because this is the best thing going. But I ain't got time for all this this black stuff. Uh, you know, I got my family to take care of and, and, and we're going to be good and we're going to keep it moving. We got to do something, people. And it's just a matter of do we do it now? Because later it's probably going to be too late. Sit down one day, think about what happened to us in this country and how we relate to white folks and how we let them get away with shit and we don't call them on shit. That needs to start happening more and more and maybe things will change a little bit. Love, peace, soul. We out of here. Contribute, say something. You want me to say something? Fine. I'll say something. You. You people. You're not a race. You are a virus. You destroy the world. Everything beautiful you poison. You drag us from our homes. You rape our daughters, murder our sons. You crack our spines and do all you can to break our will. You stab us. Then you put the knife in our hand and tell us it's our fault. And if you don't do it yourself, you stand by, close your eyes, and pretend there's nothing wrong. And then you pray to your God to silence our scream so that you can enjoy the happiness that we built for you with our blood but it's not your fault it's the only way you know how to be and the only thing that will change anything is if another virus comes along and does to you what you do to us and I hope that happens very soon.